Prime Minister, thank you so much for coming to the Raisina Dialogue. Um, for us, uh, having Greece at the Dialogue, as you said, in many ways, catalyzes the spirit of debate. Two old debating societies and the head of both of them being on the stage, for me, is a dream come true as a conference organizer. So thank you so much for coming to the Raisina Dialogue. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, when uh, Prime Minister Modi was kind enough to offer me an official invitation to India and combine it with an opportunity to address the Raisina Dialogue, I did not hesitate uh, twice. But I think it um, uh, is um, uh, an opportunity to highlight the importance uh, of the debates that do take place at the Regina Dialogue. I would like to congratulate you for the incredible progress that this event has made. And I can tell you, uh, as I also told uh, the audience, that a lot of people certainly in Europe are very carefully listening to what is being debated here. Prime Minister, you also mentioned in your speech, we discovered democracy and each other, and now we are rediscovering each other. What is driving this rediscovery? Well, um, I think that um, uh, one of the reasons why this discussion is so uh, relevant today is also related to the fact that Greece has uh, emerged uh, stronger from a very profound economic mm -hmm. uh, crisis mm -hmm. during the difficult years of the debt crisis. It was uh, sort of inconceivable to talk about the um, topics that we that, that were raised today. At the same time, India. Uh, has also achieved a remarkable uh, sort of growth uh, leap. And what I find very interesting in this debate is that both the Indian government and our government, of course, doing things at a very different scale, are democracies that are results oriented. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. focus on delivering on specific targets, growth, um, rising wages, in your case, uh, delivering basic services to hundreds of millions mm -hmm. of people, the digital uh, revolution, which has proven an opportunity to actually leapfrog other countries, uh, which thought they were more uh, advanced than both India and Greece when it came to digital infrastructure. So I think the timing of communicating a message that democracies can actually deliver at a time when we've heard a lot about how maybe authoritarian governments mm -hmm. may be better uh, at uh, um, uh, sort of producing results for their people, and that this is happening at the larger scale possible. Mm -hmm in India, but also is happening in Greece, which many people had written off uh, as essentially a lost case a decade ago. Uh, I think the, um, the circumstances are very fortuitous in order for this debate to take place. The time place. is right to yeah. now build yeah. this relationship. Prime Minister, uh, it would be fair to suggest that in this deeply divided global ecosystem, both Europe and India are seeking their own space. They are seeking their ability to make choices. Uh, to, to make decisions that benefit their people, mm -hmm. their economic ambitions, their political security. Uh, what can we do together to prevent a new Cold War, as it were, or a G2 world, as some call it? Uh, uh, and how can we both defend the liberal order? Well, um, first of all, recognizing that democracies have much in common and need to cooperate is a starting point mm -hmm. um, for this uh, discussion. Of course, you know, all democracies are different, but uh, I think it is sometimes very, very wrong and inappropriate, I would say, when sort of one democracy preaches another democracy mm -hmm. or points a finger at what it, what it should do better. We all know that democracies are work in progress and, um, and need to improve, but India is a country of 1.4 billion people. And the fact that it is a well-functioning democracy is remarkable uh, in its own right and I think needs to be recognized uh, and, and, and needs to be uh, celebrated. We can, we can trade more. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why I'm also a, a big believer in the free trade agreement um, um, uh, between the European Union and India. Not an easy project uh, to, um, um, uh, to conclude. But when you look at a dynamic sort of uh, Indian business community looking at new markets, the European Union should be right there as a, as a priority target, and the same is true for European companies mm -hmm. uh, looking to uh, looking to expand. Uh, and then, of course, I think we also need to do more to um, uh, address the, the, the profound global challenges. I mean, uh, the opportunities and threats of AI, and of course, climate mm -hmm. uh, climate change. And uh, it is in the uh, interest, I think, of uh, of every country to pursue its own decarbonization path. Uh, on the other hand, for us in the developing world, it is also 
uh, uh, important uh, to, to recognize some facts that India, for example, accounts for you know 16% of the world's population, but only 4% of the total emissions ever uh, uh, emitted. Uh, so uh, some consideration to the starting point of each uh, country needs also uh, uh, to, 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 to be given. Uh, and of course, we've demonstrated uh, that there are win-win solutions when mm -hmm. it comes um, to the green uh, transition. We were very dependent, for example, on natural gas. And during the um, um, first year of the Ukraine war, we're faced with uh, very high costs of importing gas. The more electricity we produce from the wind uh, and the sun, the more we make our grids and our electricity systems uh, resilient, uh, the less dependent we will be uh, mm -hmm. on uh, on energy imports, which is also something that India uh, deeply cares um, uh, about, mm -hmm. and the better the environmental footprint will be of this uh, uh, of this transition. But of course, these things do not happen at the flick of a So uh, partnerships a on green transitions, partnerships on technology and trade more. I think and, that's the and, mantra. Uh, and, and I would say also, you know, uh, and ensure that uh, we, we uh, you know, th there is, you know, a seat at the table. That's why I very much insist on mm -hmm. uh, uh, on uh, the Security the Council. The reforms of the Security Reform. Council. Yeah, uh, because at the end of the day, this was a system that was created, uh, uh, you know, 75 years ago. Yeah. That does not reflect the realities uh, of um, uh, of today's um, uh, uh, world. Coming back to trade, uh, we have recently seen an ambition by European countries, India, Middle East, and even America, for example, to put together the IMEC project, mm. uh, a connectivity project that creates a new economic corridor, as it were, a new corridor of prosperity for all. Uh, how do you see Greece's role, the role of Greece in this uh, uh, framework? And uh, what could we be doing bilaterally to make this uh, come to life? Well, you just look at the map. You have Europe, you know, the Middle East, the Arab Peninsula, and you have India. Uh, and uh, the sort of the new connectivity, because these regions have been uh, connected for for, for millennia yes. through through tra trade and cultural and and philosophical exchanges. This this new connectivity, uh, which is encapsulated in the IMAC uh, project, is a is a is a is a, it's a generational uh, idea that will bring together you know thriving. Uh, economies uh, uh, ensure uh, diversity uh, of supply mm -hmm. uh, and be extremely beneficial for our people. And if you look at the map, Greece is sitting right there as mm -hmm. the natural entry point uh, for the IMAC corridor for uh, continental uh, Europe. Uh, we have the ports, we have the logistics center, we're investing heavily in our trains, in connectivity, and we want to make sure that uh, the goods and services that uh, enter the European mm -hmm. Union or even leave the European Union towards you know, the Middle East and India pass uh, through Greece. For example, I was uh, recently, uh, recently visited, you know, uh, my uh, friends in the Balkan countries, you know, Bulgaria, uh, Serbia, they're all very, very interested in our ports because they see our ports as an exit point uh, for their exports um, in order for them to reach um, uh, the global market. So the investment in our critical connectivity infrastructure in Greece is of great importance mm -hmm. to us in order to be an integral part of this corridor. And of course, the, the importance of shipping. Mm -hmm. no, no matter how you look at it, there will be ships mm -hmm. that will be that, that mm -hmm. will be necessary. So, um, uh, safety uh, of maritime transportation, a key um, uh, sort of priority right now, especially with everything that's happening uh, in uh, in the in the Red Sea. Uh, these are issues which we need to address jointly because if for whatever reason you know trade is disrupted, and more than eighty percent of global trade takes place uh, by sea. Uh, then we will uh, we will both uh, uh, mm -hmm. suffer. Mm -hmm. Prime Minister, in our countries, our people relate to each other through folklore. Lots of stories, you know, uh, Alexander the Great, Megasthenes, and you, you, you know, it, it's from time immemorial we have heard of each other. How do we upgrade this people to people connect and bring it to the 21st century? Uh, how do we, uh, in many ways, engage with the creative sectors, India? Uh, is a big creative economy, digital economy. Uh, Greece, under your leadership, uh, wants to be a digital powerhouse of the future. Uh, how do we create employment? How do we create uh, hybrid cultures? How do we create a greater understanding amongst our young people, uh, amongst our people generally? First of all, I, I think it is 
so encouraging that you know Greece and India are you know rediscovering uh, each other, uh, and uh, this people-to-people -people connectivity is particularly uh, important. It starts with basic things, for example, ensuring that we have a direct flight between mm -hmm. uh, India mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, and Greece. You mentioned the creative uh, industries. Uh, Filming more, mm -hmm. uh, more, um, uh, more productions, more films in Greece, not just in Santorini, but uh, across across Greece. That's we have a, we, 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 we have a very attractive incentive scheme to encourage foreign productions to come to Greece, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and film more people to people uh, exchanges, more educational exchanges. We're in the process of opening up our higher education to non-profit uh, private uh, universities. Uh, and this will create uh, new uh, opportunities uh, for uh, educational uh, exchanges and, and, and more uh, interaction. And of course, as a student of history, I'm, I'm a big believer in learning more about our ancient uh, uh, civilizations. Uh, and of course, this is, you know, the story of Alexander the Great is, uh, mm -hmm. uh, is, is still, you know, resonates with us, but it goes, it goes beyond that. And when I, when I mentioned uh, in my speech this notion of, of ancestral intelligence, uh, I do believe that uh, a rediscovery of how uh, the great civilizations thought about complicated problems can only be beneficial to, to, our, to, 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 our, to, our, to our thinking um, uh, today. And, mm -hmm. uh, and for us, it is, it is important because we remember that the world is not only you know, the US uh, and, mm -hmm. uh, and Europe. Uh, it's, it's not only sort of centered around uh, our um, um, uh, sort of what we call the Euro, the Euro-Atlantic um, uh, partnership. And this is, I think, a journey of discovery, but also a journey of tolerance uh, uh, and of uh, understanding the, I think, the particular historical circumstances of, uh, of every country. So uh, India, I've been to India many times. Uh, every time I discover something new, it's such a fascinating, such a diverse, uh, such a rich uh, uh, civilization. Uh, and the more we in Greece learn about uh, uh, India, the stronger the ties between our two people will become. Prime Minister, as we conclude this uh, inaugural idea spot for the Ricina 2024, uh, I have to ask you, as an observer of world affairs, in your view, how has India evolved and changed? And since you're coming to office, uh, what is the role of India that now needs to be either appreciated or engaged with by by people in different parts of the world i would say i would say two things first of all you are the fifth largest economy and you'll become the third largest economy maybe within the next decade that in itself is is something important you're the largest country in the world uh, in terms of population and as i said you are a democracy uh which in, in itself mm -hmm. is uh, fascinating. Uh, I mean, uh, imagine sort of organizing elections for almost a billion people. It's a celebration. We, we, here. we think in terms, of, it, is, and it is a celebration and participation. You know, with with uh, with, with high participation, uh, and uh, you know, uh, again, uh, uh, these these are aspects which make India particularly important. But at the end of the day. This is not just about values. It's also about interests. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a politician. I want to be practical. Okay. It is in our interest to cooperate more. Uh, uh, you know, a, an expanding economy will look for new uh, markets. For example, we want to forge uh, mobility and migration partnerships that will allow maybe for Indians to come and, 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 and work in Greece. All these things cannot happen in situations of conflict. And of course, I think we, all, we, we have an interest in making sure that India's voice as a protector of the rules-based international order is heard. But it will have to be a slightly different international mm -hmm. order. And the mm -hmm. fact that India was so successful in organizing the G20 that it brought, for example, the African Union on board is, is testament to sort of the new uh, role of, of, of India, not just as an economic, but also as a, uh, a geopolitical uh, powerhouse. Prime Minister, thank you so much for inaugurating the dialogue. Thank you so much for speaking at this Ideas pod. And uh, while I mentioned it in jest, I really do hope that India and Greece, the two old debating civilizations, mm. can put together arenas, the agoras, mm. that can foster conversations among those who don't agree, 
so that we could discover a future that belongs to all of us. Well, we'll start with Raisina in Delphi. <laughs> I'll be there, Prime yeah. Minister. Thank you so much. Thank for you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.